Hello there, this video will cover some fixes for Kali Linux running on a Chromebook, which will include how to fix sound, programs that won't run, and lost internet connection. There will be commands and further explanations listed in the pinned comment for this video. If you are interested in Linux on a Chromebook, then you may be interested in my playlist that will cover how to install and set up a Linux desktop on a Chromebook without running. By default, there is no sound. So for example, if I open up Firefox and I go to YouTube and I click on one of my videos, there's no sound. To fix an application that has no sound, we can go to the menu, search for the application, which for my example will be Firefox, right click on the application, and then select Edit Application. From here, we are going to prefix the command with env space in all capital letters xdg underscore runtime underscore dir is equal to slash in lowercase letters run slash user slash one zero 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 space. For the duration of this video, I will be referring to this prefix as the xdg prefix. Now the xdg environmental variables help programs find things like pipewire and dbus. Pipewire handles multimedia in Linux such as audio and is replacing the Pulse Audio and Jack sound servers. I will list the acronym meanings and some basic definitions of what that computer dragon means in the pinned comment. When we are done typing in the xdg prefix, we can click on the save button. Now when I go to open up Firefox from the menu and I go to YouTube to play one of my videos, hello there, this it produces sound. Note that we can use the xdg prefix with other prefixes that I've covered in previous videos, such as the gdk underscore backend is equal to x11 for running applications inside the desktop, and the sommelier command that we used to get the maximum performance out of applications. Now, if an application was in the top panel before we edited the launch command, and we open it from the panel, then it may not have taken the change and it may not produce sound. For example, I had Firefox in the top panel before I edited its launch command, so if I open it up from the panel as opposed to the menu, and I go to watch one of my videos again, there's no sound. To fix this, we can right-click on the application from the top panel, which again, for my example, will be Firefox select properties, and then make sure the application is selected. Now we can click on the button with multiple lines in it and add the xdg prefix to the launch command again, but for this example I'm just going to delete Firefox from the panel and add it back to the panel. To remove the application from the panel we can click on the dash button and then click on the remove button. To add it back to the panel we can click on the plus button, search for the application, select the application, and then click on the Add button. From there, we can click on the Close button in the Add New Items window, and then we can click on the Close button in the Launcher window. Now, if I open up Firefox from the panel and I go to watch a video, hello there, this it produces sound again. Now, applications that won't start up, such as games, may require the file path they are located in in order to start up. The file path for games is slash usr slash games slash. For example, to fix the frozen bubble game, we can go to the menu, search for frozen, right click on frozen bubble, and select edit application. From here, we are going to prefix the already existing command with slash usr slash games slash. So now the launcher knows where the frozen bubble game is located. If you're not sure where the file for the application is located, it may be helpful to look at the properties of the program in Synaptic and then look at the installed files to see where the program is located. Since Frozen Bubble has sound, we are going to prefix the whole command with the xdg prefix as well. When we are done editing the launch command, we can click on the Save button. Now, if we open up Frozen Bubble from the menu, it will actually start up and it will have. Some nice sounds! If you are following along with the same Frozen Bubble example, we can make it full screen by pressing on the F key. And then to exit out of a game session, we can press on the Escape key and then press on the Enter key. 
from the menu, we can close out a frozen bubble by pressing on the escape key once more. Sometimes applications need both the XDG prefix and an option for the audio to be enabled. For instance, to start up the game Power Mongo with sound, we need to go to the menu, search for Power Manga, right click on Power Manga, and select Edit Application. For the command, we will need the xdg prefix, the file path for where it is located because it is a game, and then we will need the dash dash sound option that enables sound for Power Manga. When we are done with the command, we can click on the Save button. Now when we open up Power Manga, it will start up and it will have some fun sounds! Again, if you are following along with my Power Manga example, we can make it full screen by pressing on the F key. To exit out of a game session, we just press on the Escape key, and then to exit out of Power Manga, we just press Enter on the Quit option in the main menu. If there are other applications that are having issues, even if they're not related to sound, we can still try the xdg prefix in their launch command because it affects things other than sound. We can demonstrate this from a terminal by first doing env space pipe space grep space in all capital letters xdg. From here we can see that there is no xdg runtime dir environmental variable. Now that we know that, we are going to try some commands. The first command we are going to do is wpctl space status. WPCTL stands for Wire Plumber Control, and it manages Pipewire, which again handles multimedia in Linux. The result of this command is that it cannot connect to Pipewire. Next, we are going to try PACTL space info. PACTL stands for Pulse Audio Control. Pulse Audio is a sound server, and the result of this command is that the connection fails. Another command we are going to try is systemctl space dash dash user space status space session dot slice. Systemctl stands for system control and it is a systemd command. Now the output of this command is that it fails to get properties. The last command we are going to try is systemctl space dash dash user space status space asterisk dot service. And again, the system control command fails. We are now going to do export space in all capital letters xdg underscore runtime underscore dir is equal to slash in lowercase letters run slash user slash one zero zero zero. This will add an environmental variable to the environment for this terminal session. After that, we can press on the up arrow key until we see the env grep xdg command that we did before. Now when we execute it, we can see the variable that we added to the environment for this terminal session. We can now do the commands we tried before. So again, we can press on the up arrow until we see the wpctl status command, and we can see that it now gives an output. Next, we can do the PACTL info command again, and we will get a pulse audio display where we can also see that it is getting replaced by pipe wire. After that, if we do the system control command that ended in session.slice, we can see an actual result come back showing that dbus, wire plumber, and pipe wire are running. To scroll up and down, we use the up and down arrow keys, and then to exit out of the display, we use the Q key. Lastly, if we do the system control command that ends in dot .service, we can see that it successfully gives us a result. And again, we can scroll up and down by using the up and down arrow keys, and then to exit the display, we can use the Q key. Another issue is that the volume control is broken, so what we are going to do is we are going to fix the audio mixer, and we are going to put that in the top panel in place of the volume control. To accomplish this, we are going to go to the menu, search for Pulse, right click on Pulse Audio Volume Control, and select Edit Application. Here we are going to prefix the already existing command with the xdg prefix, and at the end of the xdg prefix we are going to do space in all capital letters gdk underscore backend is equal to lowercase x11 space. When we are finished with the command, we can click on the Save button. 
After that, we can go back to the menu, search for Pulse again, right click on Pulse Audio Volume Control, and select Add to Panel. We are then going to right click on the grayed out volume icon in the top panel, select Remove, and then click on the Remove button. Now when we click on the Pulse Audio Volume Control from the top panel, we get a volume control that we can use. Finally, if the Linux side is not able to connect to the internet, then we can fix this from a terminal by first doing cd space slash etc to change the directory to the slash etc folder. After that, we will do ls space resolve spelled without an e on the end dot conf to list the files that have resolve dot conf in their name. Whether or not this file exists, we are going to edit it with nano by doing sudo space nano space resolve spelled without an e on the end dot conf. If there is anything already in the file, we will just delete it all, and then on the first line, we will put in name server space 8.8.8.8, .8 and then on the second line, we will put in name server space 8.8.4.4, .4, and then we will press enter. Editing this file for whatever reason restarts the network after rebooting Linux. For this example, I just put in the Google DNS servers. When we are done editing the file, we can do Control O, Enter, and then Control X to save the file and exit Nano. Lastly, we need to shut down Linux, and after Linux has finished shutting down, we can then close out of the terminal app. From there, we need to reopen the terminal app, and after the terminal has finished starting up, we can then start up the desktop. When the desktop comes up, we should then be able to connect to the internet from the Linux side like normal. If we look back at the resolve.conf file, we can see that it has been reset to what it was before. If you enjoyed this video, then you may be interested in the companion book to this video, The Chromebook Guide to Google Linux. And other than that, see you soon!